This is my Mark 12 at home. Now, first things first, I should address the reasons why I'm calling it a Mark 12, because I know a lot of you are, it's not a Mark 12. <laughs> now, the first reason is because I want to. And the second reason, let's go through the parts that I have on this rifle, starting from the back. I have an A2 stock, as you can see, it is an A2 stock. I've changed the pistol grip uh, like I changed the pistol grip on all of my rifles that can take AR pistol grips. This is an Edgar Sherman Design granite grip. I love them. I put them on literally every single rifle that I have that can take them. And the reason I changed that is because the mil-spec uh, regular grip that comes on all ARs and M4s and M16s, they suck. I also change out all of my safeties on my rifles. This one is a Wilson Combat Ambi safety. I just really like having ambi safeties on my rifles. Next, up top here, I have a Griffin Armament Snatch. <laughs> yeah, that's it's called the Snatch. The Snatch charging handle, uh, I believe it's made for suppressors, but I usually put Radian Raptors on. I just wanted to try something different because I know I love the Radian Raptors, so might as well try something else out. Next up, I'm running the Bad Lever. I run it on all of my rifles because why would you not? It makes you faster, it gives you ambi capabilities, there's no downside to it. Now the one thing that I did keep stock is the trigger. Uh, I just left it mil spec. Um, I usually change them all out to either a Geisley or a LaRue. This one I was just like, you know what, let's see how bad it really is, why I actually change all my triggers. Further down the rail I have a Harris bipod. I don't know the actual model number of it, It's you just look up Harris bipod and you'll probably find it. <laughs> and on this side I threw a spare cloud defensive rain 1.0 that I had laying around on here. It was silver, I painted it, now it's not silver. Um, works as intended. It's super, super huge. I mean, it does not need to be that big, which is why they're on Rain Point 3. Wait, Rain 3.0? Sorry, right now. And on the end here, I have a, well, this is a burn proof gear uh, suppressor cover, but on the end, I have a Silencer Co. Saker 556K on an ASR mount. Uh, I just chose the ASR mount because I have multiple suppressors that will fit on the ASR mount. So if I want to be able to switch around suppressors, try different ones on this thing, I can. Now let's talk about the stuff that really matters, the upper. The upper I have on here is a LaRue Match Grade 16 inch. The reason I chose this upper is because someone wanted to trade me a helmet for it, so I did it. I would not have chose this upper brand new with my own money because I probably wouldn't want to shell out 13, 1400 bucks for it. But since it was a trade, why not? I feel like the pricing of these uppers may be too much, especially because they had them, I think at around like seven or 800 bucks. And then they just jacked up the price for whatever reason. Yeah, I'm not sure if, if accuracy is worth that much to you. It is a heavy upper as well. So that's something you would have to figure out if you would want to spend the money on this upper. And lastly, the optic I have on here, I took off of my ranch rifle. Uh, I will be switching this optic out. So this is not something super important because I will be going up in power. Right now I have a Steiner T6 XI 1 to 6 on here. Uh, I will be changing it to a 2 to 12, I believe. So it'll fit even more of that Mark 12 vibe of having a higher power or a um, uh, MPVO, if you want to call it. <laughs> so the purpose of the Mark 12 was to try and make the M4 and M16 better. I say better, better at long range, more accurate at long range, be able to reach out and touch people uh, with a higher magnification scope and uh, a more accurate barrel. Most Mark 12s had an 18 inch barrel on them. There was an exception, uh, the Mod H has a 16 inch barrel on there, but I'm not sure how much that was actually used. As most of us know, the 18 inch and 16 inch barrels can be very accurate. I mean, depending on who you get it from, but they, they can be extremely accurate. So let's see how this groups. First thing we're shooting is this Fiocchi uh, Range Dynamics. It's a uh, 55 grain. This is not what I zeroed with, but Again, we're just gonna test a few rounds here and see how it does. This barrel is a little warm. I did let it cool off for about mm, 20 minutes or so after I was already shooting. But, um, so this is not a cold barrel or anything like that. Okay, I'm gonna be shooting top left red circle, top left. I also didn't zero this with the suppressor on. 
so we'll see where it lands. Again, we're just going to be looking at the group itself, not necessarily trying to hit the red circle. Okay, there's five. Now we are switching to, it's a weird round, but I have some, so might as well see. This is 45 grain frangible from Hop Munitions. We're just gonna see how it shoots. Um, this is not something I use all the time. This is literally just something I had laying around. All right, we're gonna be shooting top right circle. May have pulled that last one. All right, this next one is Hot Munitions 55 grain FMJ. This is what I uh, zeroed with. Um, again, I didn't zero with the suppressor on, so there's a little bit of point of impact shift. Bottom right circle, bottom right. Getting a little bit of mirage. Okay. Last but not least, this is Hot Munitions 77 grain hollow point boat tail. I'm not being extremely scientific. I'm not being very disciplined here because I'm, sh I mean, I'm shooting these groups back to back. I'm not letting the rifle rest or anything. So that's one thing to take into consideration. Again, I am seeing Mirage because this barrel is heating up. Let's see how this does. I'll be shooting the bottom left circle with Hot Munitions 77 grain Hollow point boat tail. All right, let's go check them out. Okay, we'll start with the first one, which was the Fiocchi. Um, honestly, that's not bad. That's, that's really not that bad at all, especially for it being just a range ammo. Uh, we'll come to the frangible, <laughs> the frangible, Clearly was not near as good and obviously, I mean, I was aiming right here uh, and we're, we're hitting down here, but uh, in terms of grouping, I mean, we got three together and then two together that are far away. So either I pulled those, but I mean, the fact that there's two landing over there is kind of weird. So maybe I didn't pull those. Go down here to the Hot Munitions 55 grain. Not bad, one, one flyer. I may have, I, I think I called that um, on me pulling it, but the four that I did not pull that's 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 pretty tight. Come over here to the wow, the 77 grain hollow point boat tail. We have one, two, three, four. There might be a fifth in there. I, I I didn't feel myself really pull hard on any of them, so I don't think we went out here. There's nothing over here, nothing up top, and nothing down low. So I, I believe there is four inside of there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get closer and double check. Yeah, there's there's four in there. The, the bottom one is bigger than these top two. So we had a fourth go through a single hole and then one little flyer there. Don't, don't worry about that guy. That's a really, really tight group, excluding the flyer. <laughs> so as you saw, the grouping, not bad. Not bad for a, a hot rifle and a, an okay shooter. Uh, I'm not long range expert by any means. I, I'm, as you saw, I, I pulled a few of them, but uh, we got some really good groups, especially on that 77 grain hollow point boat tail. I mean, we had four rounds all touching uh, and then one, one flyer because of human error. But if I could change one thing, or I guess a few things about this rifle, other than the optic, because that actually is changing. This is a this is a weird gripe, <laughs> but I wish the forward assist were a little more forward. I'm used to, my main rifle is an MCX, as some of you know, and I'm, I'm spoiled with it being out of the way of the charging handle and up here and much smaller rather than most AR-15s are, are where they are right now. I mean, I think Radian does it differently, how I'm describing it. They put it forward and smaller up on the upper. That, I don't know, that's just one thing I, I wish more people would do to their uppers is just move that forward. It doesn't need to be that far back. And another thing, you guys are probably going to call me a baby for this, but the A2 recoil pad is not really a recoil pad. It's it's just, <laughs> it's just the stock. It's 
it's just polymer, it's just plastic. There's no recoil absorption or anything in there like most normal, or uh, sorry, more modern stocks have. They have usually a rubber piece back here to cushion the blow, weird, and, <laughs> and just make it a little more comfortable on your shoulder. Other than that, I, I am really, really loving this rifle. It, uh, I, as you guys saw, I did paint it. Uh, that was fun. Uh, I encourage everyone to paint at least one of your rifles. I know a lot of you guys are wanting it. Oh, I, I want it to be crisp and clean. No, pa paint a rifle, paint a rifle, it's fun. This does seem like a very smooth shooter. I'm gonna have to put a lot more time on this. Um, as we saw, it's, it can be very accurate once you start getting to the groove of things. So I'll be taking this out to my camping trips and seeing how far I can push it. Uh, this and the ranch rifle. We're gonna, we're gonna try to push out to, I don't know, we, we'll see how far we can take a 5.56, maybe out to like 900, something like that. Furthest I've gone is 650, so we'll, we'll see how this goes. As always, I'll see you on the other side.